guys, Carrie here. You won't see me in this one. This video I've been waiting to do for a long time. I wanted to show the effects of TMJ and how the importance of going to someone trained in functional orthodontics once again. Uh, what I have here is I have my ancient retainer from when I was 14 on the upper arch. I have the orthotic I got last year. You guys that follow along know all about that. And I got a lower mold I made of my lower arch from the orthotic so I could show the effect on the, on the jaw joints from extraction orthodontics. I also have a quarter so you guys could see the real time size here of everything. Let me just start by saying this arch here, this is the upper arch, the only copy of it, is very underdeveloped. See? Look at that. You got a quarter in there. That's it. And I wasn't kidding when I showed you guys the sleep apnea video before how I couldn't fit my tongue in there. I don't know how somebody could let somebody walk away with these kind of dimensions, but they did. Okay, so what he basically did was they put braces on me. They yanked everything backwards many, many, many millimeters. And you got some teeth that lined up upper and lower. Sorry if you can't really see well. But anyway, the teeth are all lined up here. But there's a problem. The lower jaw has been pushed back because when you have extractions as a child, you lose some of the upper arch growth. I've attached a diagram in this video where you guys can see the growth between age 6 and age 17. It'll be about 35% down on the page on the link I put on this page. So you guys can look at that and you can see, but see, I was 12 when this happened, so that growth was stopped. And growth can be stopped as well without extractions. It's just everything's going to grow around it because you turn off the growth plates behind the teeth when you put the brackets on at a younger age. So any orthodontist can do this. They can take your teeth and line them up, okay? But problem here is the jaw joints weren't lined up because see if you... If you put them back like this, so the upper teeth are over the lower teeth, pretty much how they go. Um, problem was, I couldn't open my mouth very far, like about that far, because the jaw joints weren't together properly. So in order to get the jaw joints together properly, we had the orthotic made from Tenzing and K7s. You ask your traditional orthodontist what Tenzing and K7s are, to send them into, a, I don't know, a frenzy because they aren't going to be able to answer you. Anyway, the, um, the teeth no longer match, but the jaw joints are lined up now. So the next logical thing was to make the jaw joints match, which is way, way, way pricely if you've ever looked at that. you got to find someone really qualified in TMJ. So... The other thing is, when you make your upper arch this tiny, you don't allow yourself to be able to breathe as well. You're going to have blockages in the nasal area, and I'm going to put an article up for that as well. And the other thing is, when you start moving teeth backwards, you don't really know how far backwards too far is, or how far you can retract before you're going to have the jaw joints off their tracks. Now. How the symptoms from this start is simple popping. And before the popping even starts, and you can see this in some of the videos of folks on here that have the four bicuspid extraction, or you can even see it sometimes on two bicuspid cases. Because see, two bicuspid cases, this arch doesn't get any smaller, just this arch gets smaller. So instead of retracting both arches, you're just retracting the upper arch. Okay, the jaw gets trapped behind the front teeth. But how do you know when to stop retracting? How do you know it's been too far? Well, the first thing you can tell is that when you go to close your mouth, you, you'll see your, your lower jaw will search for a second before their mouth shuts. And you, and you can see that on a lot of these videos. I, I can give you some names of people that do this, but when, when they close their mouth, it's kind of like a search and then they find it. That's the first sign, hey, your jaw joints aren't lining up anymore. And most of them are bicuspid um, cases that I can see this on. So that's the first sign. And the second sign is you start getting some popping in here. You know, it's kind of cool because, like, you know, when you're a kid, you start cracking your knuckles. I'm like, wow, I can crack my jaws. This is pretty cool. Okay, I'll, you know. And, and as a kid, your face isn't fully developed, so the arch didn't look terribly small at that time. But now it just looks, looked horrendous, as you guys know from my previous videos. So...
The other thing that happens when this retraction goes on is now these jaw joints aren't lined up at all. So what happens when you open? What happens when you're sleeping at night and your jaw joints don't at, don't match up? We'll go back over here. Okay, what's going to start happening is you're going to start getting tension in here. What's happening is the muscles on the sides of your head start fighting because they're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, we want to be here, but we're trapped back here. It's just an awful feeling and it goes on for years and years and years and people start getting head pains, neck pains, and a lot of them can't even make the connection that, hey, this happened from orthodontic work. Most likely, it's more likely for children though and women because children are still growing in here. You stunt the growth and then you start ditching it backwards. It just makes no logical sense in any realm. But anyway, I'm going to link, the first link I'll show you guys is the one to the upper jaw development so you guys can see that about a third of the way down the page and then I'm going to link um, a video that shows the retraction in, in place so you can see how far back the teeth are getting pushed and if there's not a gigantic space under the lower like something like this that's the upper so like you don't have a space like like this going on I mean you're just yanking that lower jaw backwards these people are, are asking for problems later on it's ridiculous that they're even allowed to get away with this but you ask your traditional orthodontist about TMJ and he'll go oh that probably won't happen well then tell him if it probably won't happen to take it off the orthodontic consent form okay guys have a great day hope you enjoyed this video aloha